Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Uh, today we're going to uh, begin a uh, oil painting. It's a very beautiful photo that uh, I picked up from uh, the Grand Tetons National Park. It's an area along the Snake River of the, of the uh, Teton National Park and it's, it's called Oxbow Bend. And uh, if you Google Oxbow Bend, you'll find images, hundreds and hundreds of images of Oxbow Bend. Uh, so uh, without taking any of those images and violating copyrights, I had one of my own that I took uh, from 2007. So I took that <clears throat> image and I did some photoshopping on it to sort of make it look like a fall scene. So uh, what I like to do is go over to my computer now and uh, I'll take you through a couple, three of the photos and explain what I did. And uh, I'll be right back in a second. Hold on. Anyway, here's the original photo. This is the photo that I took in, uh, I think it was September of 2007. <clears throat> so. It's definitely not a fall scene, so uh, I had to do two things. I had to crop it down to get it to my uh, aspect ratio that fits 11 by 14 uh, canvas, and I also had to uh, sort of colorize it a little bit to make it look a little bit more like uh, a fall scene. So uh, there's the cropped image. It's, uh, like I said, it's the aspect ratio of uh, 1 to 2.7, um, and that happens to fit my uh, palette nice or my uh, canvas nicely and by using that in Photoshop and I've, I've showed you Photoshop a couple times how I do this with uh, putting a photo in and putting it on the bottom layer and then putting another layer over the top and just using brushes and pencils and uh, <clears throat> picking colors out of the palette that I think look like a fall scene I was able to create this particular image um, and then I save that as a, as a finished photo and use that as my reference um, then I also, one more step, I always take it uh, to out to the uh, griddrawingtool.com um, and I put my 4x5 grid on it and uh, then I uh, download it from there and uh, bring it back and use it for my reference. Uh, anyway, that's really all I did was just take, uh, take a regular image that I had and uh, colorize it, crop it and colorize it and put a grid over it. And uh, that's what we're going to use today. So I'll go back now and explain the paints and the brushes and we'll get going. So hold on. <coughs> okay, here we are. I'm back at my uh, easel now and uh, I have up for you the, uh, the palette that we're going to use. These are all Bob Ross colors and um, uh, except for two, I have two Grumbacher paints on here. Uh, but this is my standard usual palette, uh, titanium white. Thalo Blue, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Alizarin Crimson, Sap Green, Cadmium Yellow, <coughs> Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, Bright Red, and uh, then I have two Grumbacher colors, cadmium orange I threw on there just to kind of help me in case I want to get some of those bright orange colors in today uh, without having to try to mix them myself, um, and ultramarine violet. Those are both Grumbacher. So uh, that's the colors, the, the hues, the paints. Uh, my brushes, I've got my standard Bob Ross set here. I've got a couple of two inch blenders. I got a one inch blender. Um, I got my knife in my hand. You can see that I have a round, uh, half round brush that we'll probably use for some of the foliage and, and bushes. I've got a little stack of, of uh, fan brushes here that I can use. I've got a couple of filberts that I may use and I have a couple of uh, script liners that I may use. I think they're going out of focus. There we go. Um, so um, that's the set of brushes. I also have <coughs> over here my uh, liquid white. I think you can maybe see that. So we're going to start with liquid white as usual and we'll put that on, put a nice coating on the sky. We'll start painting this from top to bottom and back to front. 11 by 14 uh, canvas, coated, coated gray gesso canvas. Um, you also see I have some grid lines on here that match my 4 by 5 grid and I think I showed you last uh, painting that uh, I used this little uh, tool I've made. It's about two and three quarter inches wide. It's made out of hard uh, board and I just use that to sketch in my grid lines uh, <clears throat> on the canvas and it, it comes out nicely on the four, four horizontal rows and the five uh, vertical rows, uh, columns. So uh, that's it. I have my uh, reference photo up here at the top and I'm going to zoom the camera in now and get 
get lined up on this uh, easel so that we can uh, oh, hopefully see it and still see the palette. Okay, let's see here. There we go, just a little bit more there. I think that's pretty good. I think you can see most of that and uh, still see the uh, palette. And uh, so let's get going. I'm going to start with my, uh, I think I'm, instead of using those big brushes I, today, I think I'm just going to use my one inch, uh, uh, one inch blender brush here, landscape brush, I think is what it's called actually. And uh, so we'll start with that. I'm going to put some, uh, some of this liquid white on the, uh, the sky back here. And uh, I'm going to cover up all the grid lines and cover up all my sketch. And that's, uh, unless you're painting a, a copy of a painting that you got setting aside, uh, this kind of uh, wipes out the ability to get a sketch going. Uh, I'm going to just put this in and uh, kind of paint around the mountains a little bit so I can remember where they are. And uh, put a very light coat on here. This shouldn't be very, very uh, heavy at all. Just very, very light. Uh, I think you can see some of the some of the marks I have left in there that uh, I actually used a little graphite. I actually had put on this white uh, charcoal pencil that I've used before. I think I've told you about it that I do the sketching with on this gray gesso. It makes a nice nice tool to, to uh, sketch in here because it, it turns up white on the uh, gray gesso. Uh, but I put a little bit of graphite on here just to help me get some, some uh, specific points where the, the horizon is, which is down here. So I would know um, about where I want the water to come in here. So I'll just kind of touch that in right now. I'm not going to put paint all this with liquid white right now. I'll do that later. But right now we're going to start with this. I think I've got that pretty, pretty thin. Uh, pretty light covering and I'm gonna leave it at that um, okay time to start with a little of the sky let's uh, put in just a little bit of uh, Prussian blue let's we'll start with Prussian blue um, we'll start sort of on the uh, left side here I think a little uh, phthalo blue in there too to sort of change its tone a little bit. Um, see the difference in the two, two blues. Um, you put a little alizarin crimson in, you'll get just a little bit of, uh, you'll change it again to another color. So I'm uh, just sort of doing the standard X stroke. If you remember Bob Ross talking about the X stroke, that's very common in uh, the Bob Ross method. Um, I saw a lot of photos that had fall uh, coloring in them that were uh, sort of had like a gray or a dark, uh, a, a dark uh, sky. And uh, <clears throat> I don't think I want to make a real dark sky. I'm going to try to blend this and get some uh, mixtures of color in there, get some mixtures of the uh, the blues and the alizarin and uh, just sort of bring it down to where the top of these uh, mountains come so uh, I can uh, have some differentiation between the mountain and the sky in the background there. Further you get down closer to the horizon you want to put a little more <clears throat> of this uh, alizarin in there to uh, it's uh, it's called atmospheric perspective, and uh, as things get further away from you, they become more uh, blue or uh, violet or purplish in color. Uh, and uh, I don't know how that's coming through. I think I probably need to darken my colors a lot more just for the camera because it does t tend to uh, even even these values out a little bit. Um, it what looks soft and nice to me sometimes looks too too light and too pastel for you when you're looking through the camera lens so i'm going to do this and just sort of hold off put just a little more of this uh, alizarin down here to make sure i've got a good demarcation of my mountains uh, i just blended all this on the brush i haven't washed the brush out i haven't even wiped it out um, and uh, so I'm just kind of 
putting it in. Now we want to put a few clouds in there, so I'm uh, going to use the same brush, a dirty brush, put a little bit of paint on the edge and just sort of come in here and put in some things that look like they might be clouds. Uh, And uh, put a few curves in there, a few and still using my same brush, touch just a little bit of the midnight black. We'll start getting the gray undertone of these clouds. <clears throat> So we know we have some clouds that have some have some depth, three-dimensional three-dimensional depth. They're not just flat white clouds laying on the canvas. There, they have depth, and the shadow is how you start showing this depth, right? So these are just making some interesting cloud shapes. I think I still need some more dark in here. This is not showing exactly as dark as I would like it to. There's a little more dark. All right, I think I'm gonna take a look at that and see if that, how that looks. Um, the thing I remember that Bob Ross always did was always took his brush and sort of did this with the clouds. If you remember, he would pull up like this and uh, it sort of gave it a, a nice nice feeling. Um, I'm going to put a few more white tops on there because I think this needs to have some more uh, clear clouds in there that uh, I don't yet have. So the white Putting the white on um, is helping to uh, give us that look. A um, few more brush strokes up. All right, so you've got a nice little highlight right here. You got a little highlight there. I'm um, going to start putting the mountains in here, um, and I think that's all we're going to do for that right now. <clears throat> All right, I'm getting a big rainstorm here where I am. I don't know how it is where you are, but uh, coming down out there, I don't know if you can hear it through my studio windows here or not, but uh, getting some rain. Okay, so now I got to figure out where I lost my my sketch um, and try to orient these mountains. So this was my grid line here. There was a grid line there. This mountain over here was kind of right in the middle of it. <clears throat> so. Let's take, I'm going to try to uh, use one of my other brushes here, take maybe this uh, filbert, maybe I want the filbert, yeah let's try this filbert. Um, so I'm going to take some uh, my, my brown and uh, black and add a little bit of blue and try to get a sort of a dark top on this mountain here um, that's about one and a half down, somewhere in that area right there. And it sort of goes over like that. There's another little mountain that comes up like this, over just somewhere the midpoint, like this, up just a little more down. Okay, and there's a hump here, and it goes off like that. Okay, that's my first rough take on the. Uh, on the uh, top of the mountain here. Now this mountain right here that I'm painting right now is called Mount Moran. And it's probably another one of those very famous mountains that have been photographed thousands of times. And uh, it has a very distinct place where the snow falls and, and collects in here. There's an area right in there that's sort of like a uh, place for the snow to collect. So uh, I want to try to <clears throat> preserve that. 
if I can. And uh, we're here, we're going to put a few more strokes of this mountain like this. I'm just going to lay these in and sort of get the, the basis of them in. And we're going to come back and fine tune them a lot more. Um, there is one, there is one little mountain back here in the back that you can't quite see. Um, so I'm going to use just a little bit of my white and uh, midnight black to get a gray color that's darker than the sky, but lighter than what I've got going on right here. So right in this area, I've got another little mountain back there. There are tons of mountains in this. If you've ever seen this or ever Googled this and looked at it, um, you'll see there's tons and tons of mountains all filling this area up. Um, and uh, it's this place where I took the photo from is probably the most, it's really the photographer's row pretty much. If you see any, any photo of uh, Oxbow Bend, you'll see one or more of these mountains in that area. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's, um, see if this looks about right over here, that's pretty close. Comes down, and this was in the back. Lighter in the back. Kind of about the same value as that one. Okay, that's the rough outline of the mountains, the first pass. And, uh, Oh. Can you hear that rain hitting the windows? <laughs> sometimes it comes through, sometimes it doesn't. All right, so let's look now and see if we can put a put some of the uh, <clears throat> uh, some of the snow and uh, see if we can get a differentiation here of uh, where the snow might be. Some of these mountains. This one here is the one that I uh, mentioned to you as it has this very unique indentation and a place where the snow comes down and sort of collects an area like this. Uh, comes all the way down, something like that. And then there's more areas that have snow in them. I could use my knife. I may go back and get the knife and put a few more highlights on. This brush tends to pick up a lot of what's on the, the canvas already and, uh, and deposit it back down there. Um, so it, it tends to gray itself out so you don't, uh, you don't get the pure white necessarily. There's a part there, there's a turn down here. And then I'm wiping the brush out. Every time I go back to the paint, I'm wiping the brush out. Okay, so let's... See, when I go back over that, I just lost my white. <clears throat> and that needs, that, this can be blurry. This can, can sort of blend in with the sky a little bit. It doesn't have to be a hard, distinct line back there. Um, but I do want to have some distinct snow in it. The one in front of it is just a little more distinct here with some snow. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Let me get my little knife here and see what <clears throat> what I can do. Uh, get that little roll of paint on there. So I come down in here like this. See if we start about right here. There we go. Getting some very interesting. So I'm trying to paint a specific type of uh, mountain with specific identifiable marks on it so that it's very obvious, hopefully, what this mountain is. Just touch it very lightly. Let it let the canvas pull off whatever it will. It also picks up the, the gray that's underneath um, and puts it back on the uh, canvas in a gray 
Okay, something like this here, folks. I'm trying to get, kind of bring this down further. It's not coming down far enough. I just realized I don't have my mountain down as far as I need it. Let me put this down a little further. Just using some black, a little alizarin maybe. Pick this color up that I had in there and just pull it down. I'm trying to ruin it now, aren't I? <laughs> well, let's see if we can pick some of that up. <clears throat> Come back with some white over the top. Okay, a little bit of that lizard won't hurt, I don't think. Um, see, there's a this mountain comes down and sort of makes a there's one it sits in front of the one behind it actually, so it's it should have a little bit of a some sort of a look like this. There we go, something more like that. Yeah. And these, the angle of the palette knife is the angle of the, of the mountain. Let's put this down, I gotta get this down further. I didn't paint that down far enough, folks. I'm gonna come back with my brush and sort of Try to fill that in along here. This is the top of the, the tree line down here, and I didn't pull that down far enough, so I almost messed it up by putting that, these other colors in there, but hey, you get to see me screw up, and maybe I can fix it. This is darker coming down here. See that dark just gets eaten alive by the uh, white liquid white that's on there. This is a much higher, this comes over this way. This is in front. Okay. There we go. This is the one that's in front. So let's do this. And pull it down all the way. I got to bring this all the way down to this tree line down here. I really messed that one up. <clears throat> all right. Uh, so you're getting to see me fix a problem or two here. But oils are very, very forgiving. Much more forgiving than watercolor, for example. And I do watercolors as well, as you probably know. Um, I got too anxious to get my knife out and start putting putting on this snow that I uh, forgot how far I was supposed to bring the uh, a line down to beat the top of those trees. There we go. Now this is a case where if I actually had some uh, liquid white behind that, that would be a good place to make some uh, mist. And uh, I may do that yet. <clears throat> I don't have to have the liquid white underneath to do mist. Um, I know what Bob Ross always did, but he always totally covered his canvas. And uh, they didn't do that. Okay, so you see how you make one mountain look like it's in front of the other is by whichever one, like right now it looks like that back mountain is in front of this one on the left, but by just taking a, a thing like this, all of a sudden I just pushed it back. It's the contrast, <clears throat> the value change, and uh, that's what gives the uh, <clears throat> optical illusion of what's in front of the other the other object. Um, so that's this needs to come down here more like this. There, that's better. Up here, we've got some. Let me get my knife out again. I'm getting ready to use this palette knife again. Okay, let's see if we can put a few more snow. Give myself some room to work out here with the palette knife. Just get a little roll of paint on there if we can and see what we can do over here. Like this, take the knife the other way, pull it down. Okay.
starting to get a little uh, mist in there right now. Looks like mist in some areas. That, this is uh, pretty well finished off up here, I think. I'm going to just pull a few more things down there. Leave that little top up there. That's sort of a distinctive looking piece. These pieces here. All right, so I want to leave just a little bit of that uh, <coughs> mounted edge around so you can tell that there is definitely a different, that the mountain is in front of the sky. I don't want it to blend in with the sky. And some of this I can actually blur and make it blend in with the background a little bit. This one over here, this little job right back there, I'm going to put just a little bit of a lighter snow, maybe a very, very light back here. Okay, so you're seeing now the, the range and uh, try just a little more up here on this top to sort of finish that off, make it look like there's definitely, okay, all right. I think that might be all I want to do there. I may want to pull down just a little more here. I don't know. I'm going to get my uh, <clears throat> brush out and try to see if I can put a little mist in the bottom of this. This has got way too much stuff going on over there. Fix that up. <clears throat> Should be darker. If I use that. If I use my brush, I'll be able to blend that a little more over here. Get a little more of the color of the photograph. I don't have to exactly match the photo, but when you're trying to paint something that people would recognize, it's a little better to try to match it where you can. Um, okay. <clears throat> now, let's see if I can put just a little <clears throat> mist back here, right above those trees. I think I'm going to use my uh, one-inch brush here. I have to clean that job out. <clears throat> if anybody has a question or a comment, go ahead and type it in the chat window. I have another computer up here that I uh, monitor, and uh, I can talk back to you a little bit if I don't forget to check it. Um, all right, so I'm going to take a little liquid white in this this uh, one inch landscape brush, mix it with a little regular titanium white so it's not all liquid white. We're going to come across here at the top of these trees and we're going to kind of put in some, a little bit of uh, mistiness here. I can do that without making a lot of pounding noises. That last video I did, I really apologize for the sound of all the pounding in there. It was really uh, the kind of board I was using and it it just really sounded bad, I thought. Okay, so this is not to say, this is actually canvas, so I'm actually now have something soft to pound this on and it makes it a lot nicer, a lot less noisy. If I pound it harder, I could make it noisy, I suppose, like this, but um, I'm trying to uh, minimize the sound disruption. Something like this is what I'm trying to get. Get a nice little soft area. Looks like it's kind of foggy. Might be something you'd see in the, the fall. And it will bring the colors out underneath it if you tap it just right. I'm trying to eliminate the... Uh, I don't want it to look like a straight line across there, even though it might be a straight line. I don't want to make it a straight line. All right. <clears throat> Clouds. Mist. 
hitting all the mountains. So I could probably mess around with those mountains for a long time to keep trying to get more um, distinct details in there, but they are pretty far away, so let's just kind of leave them and uh, leave it at that. This has a nice, for the camera, this looks like a nice shadow there. I don't know, I, that's kind of an accident. Uh, and this looks like a nice shadow over here, so I was able to get it looking like the sun is coming from the, from the left. Um, and then these other things kind of look like indented shadows as well, so the mountains sort of making them uh, look like they're in, in shadow. So that's again optical illusions, optical illusions. All right, <clears throat> let's see now. Let's start working on our trees. We have a row of trees uh, that are kind of small over here on the left side and they get brighter and oranger and more beautiful as they move to the right. So let's start on the left. I'm gonna get my uh, another filbert out. And they're really a dark, a dark green. I'm gonna use green and uh, Van Dyke Brown to see if I can get a color that represents what they might look like. Maybe even put a little alizarin in them so I get a little of that distance. But um, back here we got a tree there. Let's see. It comes down here. Well there actually is a tree right here. Um, sort of one that's sort of in the front. Um, so let me just test my colors here and see if that, that looks like. It's, it's a pretty decent color. I might want to lighten that up as we go further back. Um, here the uh, row of trees sort of runs right along here in this area. There's the, and then we got a, so there's a row of trees that sort of fit right in here. See if I can just sort of sketch that in a little bit. It runs over into the trees below here. All right, so how are we going to do that? We're going to get us some dark color, alizarin, sap green, midnight black, and back here in the distance we're going to start putting in our, using the side of the brush. I'm going to run this pretty much all the way over and I need darker, darker, darker. Um, these are back there in the distance. And they're small. They're very small. You can barely see them some, in some respects. I'll probably paint over some of this anyway, but let's leave it at this. Coming through, put in a few few more spots in here. This is going to come down. I'm going to have a... Okay, I see what I'm... Trying to follow that photograph fairly closely. Again, because people know this area. And if I say Oxbow Bend, people are going to look for this symbolic shapes and they're going to say, well, that's not Oxbow Bend if I don't try to at least mimic it very closely. Um, got a dark, darker bottom on these, dark base. Let's put a, uh, some of that midnight black in here. Pull it across. Doesn't have to be very distinct. I'm painting very abstractly. I'm trying to make the top have some undulations. I don't want it to be flat. Even though that photograph is absolutely horizontal, don't do that in your painting. It's probably one of the best tips I can give you is to try to make things, make an interesting shape on that because you're taking something that's, I don't know, two miles away and you're trying to put it on 11 by 14 canvas. And if you paint as the photograph sees it, you're going to end up with a very boring, very, very boring uh, painting. And, uh, People don't tend to like boring. They kind of just look right by it and uh, move on down <clears throat> the line and look at somebody else's painting. So what we have here below this now is we have a layer of sort of grass that's dead and dying 
or at least it's burnt out for the fall. And um, I just picked up a little ochre, a little bit of my CAD yellow. I'll come back and put some highlights of CAD yellow in there. Um, and we're going to use this now for our some of our, more of our trees. But this is the um, sort of the edge of the water here that I wanted to get put in. And uh, it has a little bit of greens in it in some areas. So we'll put a few streaks of of our sap green, dirty sap green in there. Um, something like that. <clears throat> Pick up a little more yellows, bring on some other highlights here. Okay, so that's that. Um, I've got some oranges and some other colors in those trees here that I'm going to try to lay in with this with this brush now. Like right in here, there's some trees are starting to turn, starting to change their color. Pick up a little cat orange and my uh, Indian yellow, and uh, just put in a few little highlights back there in the back. These are the trees that are starting to turn already. Very small amounts. Pick up all that green and I have to come back and wipe that out because painting wet and wet, you always pick up paint that's on the canvas and you have to, if you don't use your paper towel and your colors right, you're going to get mud. So I'm trying to keep from getting mud here, folks. Wipe it out. I haven't washed out my brushes too much. I just kind of wipe them out with a paper towel. Okay, so we're getting some few trees that are looking like we've got a changing set of trees back there in the distance. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go across here. Pick up my orange, pick up my Indian yellow. I kind of like those two together for some reason. <coughs> And we'll start putting them in here. Now they're getting brighter as they get closer to us. Um, so I'm going to put in the orange and I'm going to come back and put in some yellow over that and I'm going to intersperse that with some uh, dark green trees that are still uh, there. There's still a lot of ever evergreens and these actually should get, should get larger. They should get larger as they come forward because this is around the bend and we're, they're coming closer to us so we want to make sure we get them larger as they come this way. Otherwise, we'll lose that <coughs> perspective and that optical illusion as well. They look kind of blurred out a little bit to me. How important, <coughs> how important is it to use dry oil paint for wet on wet painting? Well, I don't think there's any paint that's really dry. Uh, these all have oils in them. Um, so um, it's just, it's painting, what, I'm, what I would do right here, <clears throat> what I would call this, is painting wet on dry. I've got paint, oil paint, it's, it's wet, uh, and I'm painting on dry canvas. That's called wet on dry. If I paint over these areas that already have paint on it, that's called wet in wet. So I think I mean, Bob Ross was an expert at doing this uh, in terms of getting wet on wet to, to look right and stick on top of it. But a lot of people have this trouble of trying to get wet paint on top of wet paint and it's, it tends to frustrate at least the people that have been in my classes when I've taught the Bob Ross method. Uh, that's, a, that's one of the most frustrating things is they, they, don't, they don't wipe their brush out well enough or they don't get enough uh, paint on there to like stick on top of the wet paint that's already there and they end up mushing it all together and getting getting mud. That's why I leave areas of my painting um, un, unpainted with the liquid white. I can still see the landscape what I've got to fill in here. These are all trees down here uh, and uh, so the paint is uh, as dry as I can make it because I'm not putting any additives in it um, and it's uh, going over dry canvas so that's wet on dry. So that's how I would kind of answer that question. I don't know if that 
answered it exactly what you were looking for or not, but type something back if uh, you have another question. I'll be glad to try to answer it. Um, this is all, a lot of this is all sort of orange and green and those colors. Um, and uh, I'm going to come back and bring in some yellow highlights now. A little ochre and uh, cad yellow. See, the, once I touch the, that wet paint with the cad yellow in my brush, it, it picks up whatever color is under there. So you have to very carefully try to put in these highlights. And you have to turn your brush over and you have to stop and wipe it out. As soon as you see the color you're putting on look mushy, stop, wipe the brush out, get some more paint on it. You use up a lot of paint that way, but you're not making mud on the canvas. So these have to have uh, clean ways to drop the paint off. <clears throat> so that's kind of the idea behind this. I'm going to put some of these other yellows in here. It sort of blends in with everything. <clears throat> I'll use some cad yellow with my Indian yellow and see if I can get just a, another shade of, uh, of this um, yellow here. So I have more than just, I don't want to put just pure cadmium yellow on the, on the canvas on top of whatever's there. Uh, I want to uh, mix it up. I want to have a mixture of colors. I want to have variation. Great, I'm glad that explanation helped. <clears throat> so you can see the difference between wet on dry and wet on wet. And um, that's why I use the brush the way I do. I mean, Bob Ross would just come, probably come in here and stamp this and be done in a few, few seconds or a minute or two. And uh, I'm taking more care, taking a little more time, uh, using different kinds of brushes. But I'm trying to get this look of a whole, um, whole bunch of trees back there that are some are still green and some are changing some are already changed and so when I use my filbert brushes I can come in here and these filbert brushes have a nice edge on them they have a nice top um, I can come in and put in little trees like this that show we're getting closer to us and as we get um, this area I'll, be, I'll make them larger as they come forward so these are some of the evergreen trees that are stuck out there that are kind of mingling and, and uh, they don't change color because they're they're uh, green all year round so I just want to put a few little highlights and things in here if I put it in just some little things it will look like I have a mixture of evergreens and deciduous trees that change their color See that? How that works? Now all, all that is is just a little tap. Just a very light tap. I'm not painting a tree. I'm just stamping it with a little, little tap. These areas over here I need to get some uh, base on this. So let's put some of my browns uh, in here. See if we can put a sort of a dirty base. Connect them to the ground. I don't want them stuck there like they're just uh, not connected to anything. I want that to look like it's all part of a field. These trees are all part of the landscape and uh, they're all sort of connected. This is the bank of the river, Snake River, and uh, they're all connected back there. That's why you blur these edges up. That's why you make it look like it's some things going up like this. We do the same thing over here. Um, when I start putting in the base, pull this down. Um, and over here, I'm going to have some of the, uh, the similar type things going on over here for the uh, bank. Uh, okay, so I haven't put my water in yet. I've just basically um, put the uh, the bend this is the bend in the river here and uh, 
as I use this brush I can just sort of connect connect the uh, ground to the trees above it put a few uh, vertical things in there I'll come back maybe if I don't forget I'm going to come back and put in some uh, little tree trunks and stuff over there that kind of help tell the story as well but this time of the year this this ground the grass is all turning brown or some color and uh, the uh, so it's dying off and uh, the trees are turning their color so I've got mixtures of colors of green and brown and ochre cad yellow for the bright yellows and we need some highlights in here so I'm going to throw a few cad yellow highlights in there in some spots and then before I get done with that I want to put a I got to put a uh, I guess you'd call it it's the it's the, <clears throat> the vertical bank all of this has some sort of a vertical bank here that touches the water so I'm just going to run my brush along and give you the impression that we have um, the edge of the bank here running all the way back I'm not drawing a straight line I'm just sort of hitting and missing and you see how nice that looks when you just touch it and leave it alone you don't, you don't draw a straight line like you would with a pencil or a a pen or something like that um, you just touch it very very so lightly and it's sort of a hit and miss you hit it some places and you miss it another and it gives that rugged a more much more realistic um, feeling of a bank um, and I, I, I feel this is a much better way to uh, to paint uh, something that's is a real place we've been going not quite an hour so as I put this water in that's going to go fairly fast um, so um, let me see I'm going to get my fan brush out and start using it for that water because these are all going to be horizontal a lot of horizontal strokes and the fan brush works well for that it I can get it into the areas where I need to uh, have the water back there and uh, so let's see here I'm, I think I'm pretty well I may come back and touch that edge up a little bit I don't know before I do that I wanted to put some trees in that background so let's get some uh, some of this uh, thinner odorless thinner and get it on our palette here and make a, a slushy thing here that looks like it's got really runny paint and I'm just going to put a few um, things back here that look like there's some trees that might be might be there that are lost their leaves maybe they're a dead pine tree or something and uh, just touch that up even over here could put in a few over here maybe those are needs to be lighter over there because uh, you're uh, you've got a dark background you won't even see the tree trunks if you don't make them a little lighter so I'm gonna put make them grayer with some take some white and mix in there with that and get a little grayer tree trunks going on over there that may be hard for you to see <clears throat> it looks pretty good to me so if you just kind of follow that idea use a little gray and put in there in some of these areas um, that will really help all right so I think that's good for the background good for the middle ground and we're ready to start on pretty much the foreground I would say <laughs> I can't believe I see that Zerumski art I love the colors in the painting well thank you I, I did too that's really why I wanted to do this I, I saw a lot of photos on uh, when I googled <coughs> oxbow bend and uh, a lot of them this time of year have the uh, fall colors in them and so I didn't see any that were open source or any that I could really use without a copyright infringement and then I happened to remember that 
my wife and I were in this area back in 2007, so I searched through my archives and I found a painting that I did, and had, uh, not a painting, but a photograph. And uh, sure enough, I had a picture of Oxbow Bend, and I even had the, the uh, Park Service's uh, descriptor in a photo to show that that's exactly where I was. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I'm going to start using now some of my white and trying to get sort of a, a grayish color for this water. And I'm putting some liquid white in with my uh, midnight black. I'm going to start back here and start just putting in the water here. See, that's almost too white. It needs to have a little blue in it, but when I start putting blue in, blue just starts eating up the color. We'll see. I've got it thin because I put liquid white in it. So if I take some of my blues over here, just a little bit of my blue, get them in the brush so it starts turning bluish. And start changing the color a little bit, hopefully. This, I want this to go back behind, back here. So we're going to change this up a little bit, add some blues, add some black. Okay. This water takes on different colors, <clears throat> as you've probably heard me say before. Water really has no color. It reflects the sky. It reflects what's above it, what's in it, what's under it, or what's around it. That's how you get the color for your water. So I'm either reflecting the sky here, which this tends to look like, or I'm reflecting the, uh, the mountains that are behind it or around it or the bank that's around it. And the reflections aren't there yet, but I'm just putting in the base color so that I have something to put the reflections in. So I'm just getting this covered with a nice coat of white, liquid white, midnight black, a little bit of my Prussian blue or thalo blue, whichever one you like best. And I'm sort of graying it down here. It's trying to make it look a little bit like the, uh, the sky. And uh, so as I get down here further away, I'm going to get this, this bluish reflection down in this area that's uh, representing what's at the top of the painting. This side over here, I'm going to cover that up with some stuff, so I'm not too worried about that. So this fan brush, so I really put that in there very quickly. So now that looks like a, uh, a bend in the river. <clears throat> but now how are we going to make our reflections? <laughs> you should ask. All right, well, I'll tell you how we're going to do it. We're going to use this same fan brush. We got the paper, or the canvas now is nice and wet. And the first thing we're going to pull down is these colors that are around the bank. These ochres and yellows, Indian yellows, and we're going to like put them in here, like this. Pull this down. Add some more colors, ochre. Okay. Vertical brush strokes. Vertical brush strokes. up a few colors over here the same way. And then what's on top of that is the mountain. So we want if we're going to have a reflection this mountain, the reflection has to go like it's the mountain upside down. So <clears throat> What's that going to look like? Well, that's going to look like this black, gray, black. When I put it in over that, it's going to turn lighter. But it's going to start looking like this here would, would look like 
that all the way over here. It would kind of mix with the other colors. It needs to be darker. I, you're having, I'm sure you're having trouble seeing that. So let's put in this mountain here that looks like this. Have a little bit of a mountain there. We have another one that goes this way. So it's going to come over this way like that. So I'm just trying to put in some underlying strokes here that sort of let us see those mountains. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to draw those mountains in a lot of detail. I want them to be sort of fuzzy and soft. The water is probably moving here although I'm not showing a lot of movement in this water. Uh, but I am trying to get the some re vertical reflections here that kind of tie this together. And while I'm at it, I might as well put some of that white reflection in there as well. There is some, some white from these mountains that sort of let you know there's some snow up there. If you make it go the way the top of the mountain goes, it will more accurately reflect what you're reflecting as opposed to just making them straight, right? You would want, you would want to make them go the way the, the mountain goes here. I don't know if you can see that that well. It's, uh, when I look back, I have a monitor behind me here and I look back and I see it's kind of a little bit hard to tell what it is reflecting. but. Anyway, this is the, uh, the mountain and some of the reflection. I still think it needs to be darker. I'm going to put a little more darkness in here. Make it a little more distinct. Taking more time than I should with this, but I want to try to give you this idea that you can really connect these together. I'm not done with this. I got to put that, I got to use my brush to uh, make those horizontal brush strokes. Um, put the dark on and I put the white over it and I come back and put more dark over that so okay so these are just sort of basic strokes get some more white and come back in here and put a few white strokes in this way and this way this way this way and see when I get done with my other brush you're going to see that this is uh, this goes like this <clears throat> okay, so now the big brush, this uh, one inch landscape brush, the way you work on these is you take them and go very, very lightly across like this, wipe out the brush, don't get too much paint in it. Okay. Very lightly, very lightly. So I don't have specific, very, very detailed uh, mountain reflections in there. If you'd like to do that, you can make them more distinct than mine. You can actually come back in here and put some more, uh, put some more of that reflection in there of those colors. Um, I think I'm going to put just a little more orange in some of these because they're not quite orange enough. Just touch in a few spots of orange. And then come back with the uh, blender, this landscape brush, and, uh, and just hit it again very lightly, very lightly. What was it Bob used to say? Three hairs and some air, I think he used to say. Very light. Okay, um, I need to put the edges around the, the water. There's a, there's a couple things that uh, would typically be done here. Was, uh, I did put some of that <clears throat> edging around the water on the bank, but it doesn't touch the water exactly, so it's sort of a... I need to sort of fine-tune these edges here to make sure they're connecting. It's that one. This one back here a little bit more. Okay. Um, 
and then uh, if you remember um, Bob Ross would always take his his knife and he this is one where he didn't really get the uh, roll of paint on it he sort of got a uh, got the edge of it the uh, the top of it covered and he would come in and wherever he had these reflections you got to do something like that but you got to have enough paint on the end of your brush to, to do it <laughs> didn't quite get enough paint on there try this again here maybe up here So this this helps those reflections look <clears throat> look more more real. Um, it looks like it's it's more running water than uh, than not. So um, that's good for that. Let's go back now. All we really have to finish is this group of trees over here on the left hand side, and uh, see if I can get that going, <clears throat> and uh, we'll finish this thing up. Um, these uh, one thing I did here was try to leave. An area of the water behind these trees so I can have the trees and have the water show through and uh, see if I can get this uh, some of this cad orange and Indian yellow put this I've got a nice big old tree right in here right in here there's a big tree and it's got some other parts of it. There's a big green tree in there. There's some more yellow. I'm going to just sort of use the paint that's in my brush here. Uh, and uh, I want to, uh, you see, I want to put some of that cad yellow on there. So it's kind of on the outside edges here. So A lot of cad yellow in here. Leave that water there. I'm going to put some more dark green trees in here to fill out that space because I have a little bit of space there where the water is. I think I'll cover that up, but I'm going to keep the uh, <clears throat> the other part here open. Um, down here, let's get some darker colors down here. Where's the brown? So this is the other part of that peninsula that uh, sticks out from the left side. And uh, put some... make it match with the water there. Okay, and we got some greens and some other trees, greenery going on in here. Uh, we got a tree that actually comes up here like this. It's a big dark green tree. I'll make sure that's darker than what's behind it. Or you won't see it. <clears throat> I could make that with my fan brush, but I just don't want to mess with the fan brush right now. Um, this tree is going to come over. There's going to be some more greenery stuff here that just sort of connects that together. And that's that one. Let's see here. Um, down here, I'm going to have just a little greenery there. Like that. Um, script liner come in here we're going to put in some uh, <clears throat> some tree trunks some things that are going on in here like this um, using my Van Dyke brown a little bit in black I'm going to put a couple three tree trunks right here so this will let you see that we've got we're looking through this set of trees to the water behind and uh, it's always a nice thing to do in your painting if you can find a way to uh, um, put 
a little hole, a little peep, peep hole back there that people can look through and see. Uh, it gives more depth, gives more interest. And uh, it's a good, nice little tip. I'm going to put a few things here, put a little more of this dark along the bottom there to darken that down. It's not quite dark enough to suit me. Okay, so we've got things that look like this is coming down that way. A few things in here. Um, thing I didn't do is this area <clears throat> on the right side. We're going to get a little bit of uh, paint and come in here and scrub this thing all up. Kind of helps balance it out just a little. Uh, there was a big, if you remember the first photo I showed you, there was a, a hole. This thing comes around the bend and comes back this way at you. So there was plenty of uh, foliage and grass and stuff sitting here. Um, and uh, so I'm just sort of putting in a few things that help kind of define that <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, maybe uh, something darker, put in a few other colors here. And then come back and uh, try to put in a few of the, uh, just a few trees or tree trunks or whatever over here. Put in a, something like this, maybe make a All this stuff wasn't there. It was sort of a grass that had been sort of, I don't know, run down or certainly wasn't uh, like that. Um, so that's, I think that's probably enough here to show you what Oxbow Bend looks like. Put a few little jobs out here to sort of indicate we're at the edge of the river, maybe a couple things back here, I don't know. Um, I don't want to mess it up too much. <clears throat> I think I'll probably stop. Okay, and let's see if we can find a, a good color to put my name in. And once I sign it, I'll maybe stop. I don't know. Sometimes I look at this after I finish broadcasting to you guys and before I edit the video I'll come back and put just a few more things in it um, but I'm going to just put my name in here like that like this I think it's readable I don't like to put my name so bright and broad gaudy that <clears throat> it takes your eye away from the painting. Some artists put a great big, well I think Bob Ross even did that. He would put a big red, put his name in red all the time. Uh, I don't do that. <clears throat> Alright, I'm thinking that's enough for now. I may make a few tweaks to that. If I do they'll be in the final, uh, the final painting with the, uh, whoops, in the final painting uh, as I edit it. But uh, anyway, I think that's all I want to show you today for this demonstration. I hope you like Oxbow Bend. I hope you uh, Google it and find some other images that you might be able to use to, uh, to uh, paint this. And uh, use my images. Go out to my website and pick up the, uh, the, the reference photos. Pick up the grid. Uh, that little sketch is not worth much, but you can pick it up if you want it. Um, check out my Facebook page, check out my Patreon's, Patreon site, and uh, I do have some purchase links in this uh, below this video that if you're interested in buying some of the materials or supplies that I use or finding out what they are, just check those links and uh, they'll tell you what I'm using for my paints and brushes and that sort of thing. So I think with no more to be said, I'll just say uh, thanks for tuning in today. I really appreciate having you here. And uh, so until I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye.